Hello everyone and now welcome to game two in this series between Yumiko Tho and Fly versus Ted. All right, it looks as though I need to go ahead and change this up a bit. There is Yumiko spawning as the pink human. He is speed building his altar of kings. Meanwhile, on the other side over here, we have um, Tho choosing Night Elf. Okay, so this is going to be Night Elf Orc this time around versus um, human and undead. Um, I guess, I don't know, Did he, I wasn't even paying attention. Was Tho actually random or did he choose Night Elf? Um, someone who wants to go back can answer that question pretty quickly as we are now moving into the early game. All right, I, I know it's a little bit of a funny thing to say the first minute in first minute of this game to say that this is the early game, but really Warcraft 3 is a much faster paced game when you have 2v2. Armies, experience, all those elements um, escalate much more quickly as your heroes are at level 3 very, very fast. And level 3 heroes can do a lot of damage. So, now opening up with a Keeper of the Grove, interestingly enough, even though that this map normally just screams human human is generally the better um the better on this map but yumiko human perhaps they didn't want a double human and so going in for a keeper of the grove is going to scout out his opponent here there's a wisp now moving out across the field and if you did not know wisp are the only workers um, in their base form to have average movement speed everyone else does move rather um, slowly as we now are taking a look at Wisp now walking around. I, I don't know if you guys ever n knew this about um, me and and Warcraft 3. I, I was the one that actually talked um, to some of the Blizzard guys about Wisp forest walking. Um, back in the day, you could actually bypass units um, with ghouls because they would go to harvest lumber and whenever you're harvesting, un um, harvesting any resources, you can pass through units. Well, if your opponent was standing in front of a tree, all you needed to do was click on the tree behind him and then pass the entire front line. Once the entire front line was gone, you could surround your opponent's hero and take him out very, very quickly. So they quickly decided, you know what, that needs to be fixed. Let's fix that. Well, they fixed that, but they didn't fix the fact that you could also do that with Wisp. Now you're thinking to yourself, all right, it's Wisp. They don't have an attack. What, what does it matter? Well, against anyone who really, really likes heroes, that there is a problem. Against a caster army, what was happening were that Wisp were able to just bypass the entire front line and then start detonating on sorceress and priests in the back line and all the heroes. All of a sudden, a human, a human versus night elf matchup, the Wisp became the anti-spell unit as opposed to the fairy dragon. That was fixed, though. I believe Wisp no longer can pass through units when harvesting, when trying to harvest lumber. And we'll see how all of this plays out. A little bit of a side story that has nothing to do with anything except for the fact that, hey, I tried to... Oh, oh, that one peon down to three hit points. Oh, wow. Tho must be absolutely upset with himself. That Keeper of the Grove um, now and wandering around once more. Let's come back over here. We can see... Death Knight is trying to do a little bit of creeping here. Keeper of the Grove may come over as well. Crypt Fiend now coming over. Footman and oh, what's going to be happening? Are we going to perhaps see the Death Knight try to get that last hit there as both sides are fighting it out? Okay, there's the Death Coil steal or Death Coil to ensure the kill. Death Knight now seeing that level two bring of protection gives him a little bit more strength, but Crypt Fiend's going to get um, ensnared down. If the Keeper of the Grove can get another Crypt Fiend, yes, it looks like he will be able to. Ted is going to be in trouble right now. In any of the 2v2 matchups that I've seen, it really looks like if you shut down Ted, Fly cannot carry the team. Keeper of the Grove now trying to get away. And oh, the Death Knight does not have enough in order to try and take him down. Oh, wait, does he have enough? Is he going to try to save that Crypt No, he does not. Going after those units there, the Keeper of the Grove is down to 68 hit points. The Death Knight now with enough mana as the Crypt Fiend does get, or that Skeletal Minion does get taken out. All right, back over here. Beautifully done. So purposely losing his... Keeper of the Grove to Creeps to not give experience as we are now looking at where the Water Elementals will be traveling to. Footmen or Grunts now trying to chase after all these units. They're just going to be absorbing damage um, very, very awkwardly here as the, as the Huntresses are now making their way over. 
3v3 Huntresses versus Grunts. Um, I believe Huntresses actually win out on that fight, even though the Grunts have more hit points and do more damage to a single target. The Huntresses, with that Glaive Bounce, um, three on three, the Huntresses actually win out there as opposed to, say, um, the Grunts. That little bit of range also allows them to kite a little bit, and all of that does tend to add up. Ted, now sitting at level two, trying to get to level three, um, should be able to creep out the Mercenary Creep Camp, and if he creeps out the Laboratory, he will get to level 3. However, the Archmage is already or will already be at level 3 here in just a moment. And a level 3 Archmage with level 2 Water Elementals or even level 1 Blizzard is going to be very, very potent. Keeper of the Grove is nearby, ready to go. Getting in a little bit of extra mana as well. The, I don't understand Keeper of the Grove though as the hero. Are you going to be going for Thorns Aura? Probably not. Are you going to be going for Ents? Maybe. But both of those are just not very, very strong. In comes the fight now. This is this 2v2 fight. Huntresses and Keeper of the Grove now making their way off to the north. You can see the Keeper of the Grove now coming back around the side here. What is going to be happening as the Huntresses and Keeper of the Grove gets a Crypt Fiend already right off the bat. Blademaster comes in as well. You can see that the Huntresses taking a lot of damage but no it is gonna shadow meld it gonna shadow meld again two huntresses have shadow melded and now this is gonna give level two on the keeper of the grove as the huntresses do have thorns aura they are gonna be sitting there in the dark here in the dark would you could you in the dark try and take them out apparently not not without dust of appearance and hats off to anyone who realizes what i just quoted and I do miss reading my daughter bedtime stories. Anyways, Death Knight coming back over here. Crypt Fiend um, getting off some easy shots onto that Huntress's. The, the Water Elementals are simply too much here as they may try and start poking down the, yes, the, uh, the Spirit Lodge. If the Spirit Lodge gets taken down, the Water Elementals and the Beastmaster are going to be just that much more effective. Spirit Lodge already down to 81 some odd hit points. And yes, it does get canceled here. Perhaps we'll see the Beastiary also get taken down as the Water Elemental does give level 2 to the Blade Master. Only level 2 now. When you look at the Beastmaster and Water or an Archmage, level 3, level 1 versus level 2, level 1. That Sobi Mask on that Archmage pretty much pretty much throwing everything out of whack. Yumiko is absolutely carrying the team right now with that better creep. As Tho was there to try and shut down his opponent, was able to do so and just stop a little bit of lumber harvesting. Shadow Hunter will get to level 2 right here, right now. Crypt Fiends and Grunts trying to take down the Ogre Warriors. There's level 2 on the Shadow Hunter. Healing Wave. We also see Robe of Magi. Um, a very, very useful item on the Shadow Hunter, even though it isn't the Shadow Hunter's primary um, attribute. All right, you gotta read a Tome of Experience. Okay, thank you. I know people. I know professional Warcraft three players don't like to read, but if it's a Tome of Experience, I would flat out get mad if you didn't. All right, let's let's see what's happening next. All right, I remember so many balance issues. Oh, militia now being brought over. This is gonna be a straight up push inside the orc base. And, and will Fly be able to fend this attack off? There's a lot of Crypt Fiends, but no real way of getting um, any an additional attack speed uh, except for Endurance Aura coming in from a Tauren Chieftain. All right, there you go. There's the attacks. The Grunt's trying to make a very strong front line. Frost Nova Towers now coming in as well. Crypt Fiends trying to stay alive here. The uh, Huntresses are not going to be able to Shadow Meld this time. So one goes down, two goes down. Um, very, very quickly, but the pe peasants are already there. There's some detonation as a third crypt, third or fourth huntress will be focused uh, rather quickly. Ted could try and burrow. It doesn't look like, oh, beautiful death coil is saving that there. And this line, it looks like Ted is actually doing a good job taking down many of the units, but with uh, so many of these guard towers getting getting constructed off over here that is going to be a definite problem and um, you can see that the guard towers are nearly done water elemental going after a shadow hunter here as the crypt fiends are just completely focus firing all of the necessary units there is an ancient protector 17 over 50 supply guard tower one is up guard tower two coming into play right behind it and it looks like ted may be able to focus this down you can take a look the Beastmaster taking a lot more damage there goes one guard tower as the peasants are now trying to repair it is it going to be enough focusing down the guard tower perhaps the better choice even though um oh wait the ancient protector there's the gg and tho and yumiko lose game two ted playing extremely well now carrying um fly in this game rather short but still short and sweet 
Um, in, in terms of everything, you can take a look at the units, though, did get the most kills, but Ted and Fly got more there, or Yumiko didn't have that much of a large army at the end. Um, Tho's army was really small. He simply lost way too many units um, due to a Crypt Fiend focus fire. And that's what gave Game 1 to the Orc and Undead duo. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys, or sorry, Game 2. Thanks for watching Game 2. Please stay tuned for Game 3.